<laughs> this is the Rosewall Reviews with Journey Raid Hack and myself, Lynn Fairley. You can find us on, well, you already found us on YouTube on the Lynn Fairley Media <laughs> channel. Thank you very much for checking in. Um, we're almost at the end of the week for the Santa Barbara International Film Festival, and tonight we're going to be talking about Delroy Lindo, who is receiving the American Riviera Award from the festival. Delroy Lindo uh, just won the New York National Film Critics Circle Award for Best Actor and the Critics' Choice Super Award for Best Actor. And this is for The Five Bloods, a Spike Lee film. We'll get to that in a little bit. Delroy Lindo has been in our lives for over 40 plus years as a character actor, a supporting actor, possibly the heart and the soul of a production, always critical to the storyline and maybe the glue. What do you think about the, the essential character actor in films and in TV? How do you think of them? Um, maybe people who, uh, who steal the show sometimes from an unexpected place. So you might expect a, a, a leading man to steal the show, of course, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, for someone who has just a few minutes of screen time to really uh, go deeply into that character and, and give it their all, and, um, and we see a handful of actors and actresses who, who have this kind of uh, job as character actors, by choice or not, where they really uh, get these smaller parts, but they, they show up and they can steal the show, and if not steal it, then totally enhance the story in a way that we wouldn't have, wouldn't have thought reading the script. That's, that's Del Roy Lindo, really is. And my goodness, if you know about IMDB, go ahead and look at his page and his work. You'll be blown away. Make sure you have about half an hour. <laughs> um, he's in everything, everything. And um, I'll, I'll get to what those are, but um, in this, what we do here is we review what we've seen online uh, a live interview with each and every one of the, the stars that we would normally interview on the red carpet, we watch online. They're in their homes. The moderator, who was Ann Thompson in this case, is in her home. We're sitting here on the Rose Wall with the rest of the world, and there are people tuned in from all, all over the world watching these live interviews. So what we do is recap this. And Thompson asked him, when did he know, and this is kind of a common question, when did he know he wanted to get into acting? He had the cutest answer. 40 plus years ago, he was in elementary school, and he was cast as one of the three kings in the nativity play. <laughs> That's a start. <laughs> and from that point on, he knew he wanted to act. <laughs> I thought that was adorable, adorable story. Hmm. Um, he's a giant of the theater. Uh, that's where he started and almost every single question she asked him about whether process or, or whether how he did this or how he did that, different character, he would always hearken back to the theater and it was 10 solid years of theater from Otello to, to my gosh, the August Wilson plays that he starred in um, is where he got his start and, and you can, I can tell the difference between someone trained in theater Mm -hmm. most of their the beginning of their career and the ones who sort of dabble in it and the ones who want to do it again or the ones that have kind of started and left the theater I can tell who the theater actors are mainly British for that matter because they have to do that in drama school but can you can you tell who has a theater background there, stage work there might be some signs, but I wouldn't say I could always tell. No, no, but I, I admire that. I can in the nuances. I really can in the way in the way they what they do, um, sort of yeah the nuances. And he's the master of nuance. We'll get to that in a second. Of you, you've seen him in so many films, uh, having worked on five Spike Lee films, uh, some of which are and here's a few others. Malcolm X, Crooklyn, Clockers, Get Shorty. Talk about a cult classic. Uh, Soul of the Game, that is an amazing movie about um, baseball. Uh, 
Yeah. And Jackie Robinson being the first black man to play in baseball and, and his life story prior to getting into baseball. It's, mm. it's really a wonderful movie. And of course, The Five Bloods for which he's, he's receiving this award and already won Best Actor for. He was asked what it's like to work with Spike Lee. And he said, Spike Lee, you know, they worked on five films already, is all about business. And he has a, a he used the word scalpel, scalpel-like focus on what he wants to do. He has a story in his head. He's often written it himself. He doesn't want improvisation. He doesn't want a whole lot of... Um, trying new things because he knows he has it in his head already. But he said that he gives the actors a lot of room and a lot of space to be able to uh, just just act, be in the zone. And he remembers playing certain parts in the Spike Lee movie. I think it was The Five Bloods doing that one monologue where he's walking through the jungle, walking through the jungle, and he would stop walking and then Spike Lee said, you know, I don't want you to stop walking. I want you to sweat and I want you to be fully dressed and I want you, you know, in his, in his uh, military suit because this is a flashback. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a PTSD moment of a Vietnam vet if you haven't seen the movie. But if you have, this is the most memorable part of the movie when Delroy Lindo is walking through a jungle and he's just, he's, he's, it's a monologue the whole time he's walking. So he took Spike Lee's advice and he kept walking and sweating and walking and breathing hard and walking and doing his lines. And uh, the cameraman noticed he stopped for just a second once. There's something on the ground. And Spike Lee said, no, no, don't bother him. He's in the zone. And when they're in the zone, that's where I want him. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a pro. Yep. Yeah. Do you remember interviewing Spike Lee? I remember shooting you interviewing. Oh well, yeah. yeah thank you very yeah, much. That's that right. Was fun. It was interesting. I didn't think I was going to get that interview, and I don't know if you noticed this. I hung back, and I wasn't. Spike, Spike Lee, Spike, come over here, please, 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 Spike. You know, mm -hmm. I first of all thought that was rude, and then I should call him Mr. Lee. And mm -hmm. I hung back, and I and I held the microphone real close to me. I'm just giving you a few red carpet tips. Um, <laughs> Real close, I didn't have it stuck out kind of in his face, trying to get him to come forward because he was back against the logo wall. And I held it really just casually, just low, so he wouldn't see me begging. Um, and he, he kept looking at me and we made eye contact. We made eye, eye contact long enough for me to say, may I speak with you, Mr. Lee? Hmm. And he kind of looked a little bit, and slowly but surely, here comes Spike Lee, and I'm like, oh my God, he's coming! <laughs> but I never show that kind of thing on the red carpet. I never, mm -hmm. you know, lose my cool on the red carpet like I do here. <laughs> <laughs> here, here he comes, and I knew what I wanted to ask him. And instead of facing me, um, and we're very close on the red carpet, by the way, we are just one on one, and he was quite close. And instead of facing me, he turned to the side, and he went like this, and he leaned into me quite like this. So here's my face, and here he is leaning into me. And I kept the microphone out of his face. I kept it low. You can see this. It's on one of our videos. Just scroll down and find it. Mm -hmm. And I asked him my question. And then he took off and went down the rest of the red carpet. And that, to me, was one of my favorite um, interviews because first of all it's by Lee mm -hmm. and um, second of all it's because it was really intimate the way he just sort of leaned in and he just kind of put his he's a really little guy very cute kind of just put his head in like this like we were coming kind of tell a secret to each other it was very cool <laughs> it was cool I, re you I remember, remember that this? posture yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it was really cool so I had to add that I wasn't planning to but I did <laughs> um, <laughs> So born to Jamaica parents, Jamaican parents in the UK, moved to Toronto, then attended um, the American Conservative Theatre um, in San Francisco at the very same time as Denzel Washington. Delroy, Lindo, and Denzel came up together. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> but look at their trajectory. I mean, Denzel Washington went to that place of the lead, mm -hmm. the name on the billboard, and Delroy Lindo is right there next to him as the glue in the story. The mm -hmm. guy, the character actor, the story wouldn't work without. Mm -hmm. And they just rose just like that in different 
in different ways, which I thought was interesting because their careers could have gone the same way or not. Mm -hmm. Same school. Very cool, though. Very cool. He is, like I said before, he's the master of nuance, and that's true. He, and Ann Thompson brought this up, he's the master of the silent, the ability to express himself. And this is where the theater work comes from. For me, mm -hmm. I can tell the people who've been on stage or have been in the theater by their ability to express in a huge auditorium to a thousand people, the person in the way back can see a move, a blink of an eye, an expression, or a feeling, or something that's emoted all the way to the back end of the theater. This is where I can recognize who's had that type of theater work and who hasn't. And boy, does he have it in spades. He is the master of that silent bit of communication. Just incredible. Um, she inquired, uh, Ann Thompson inquired with Delroy Lindo as to what his process is. And he gave away a secret. He says whenever he gets a character, he sits down and writes an entire biography about his character. If he doesn't know their past, he makes up their past. If he doesn't know their future, he writes it all the way into the future. And then he takes the chunk of the character he's supposed to play and that's in the script and he knows, and he incorporates all that into his the biography he writes. And he's kept every single one of the biographies he's ever written on every single character. And this is 42 years of work. Wow. This is also a technique of theater. The rehearsing and the rehearsing and living and breathing the character. So um, he's, he said that also dictates everything he does and knows about the character. And, and what I thought was cool is he finds that character's center of gravity. Mm -hmm. He says, it's always different from my own center of gravity. And he says, and you have to know where your center of gravity is. He says, and that, that will dictate how I walk as that character. Mm -hmm. How I talk, how I shrug my shoulders, how I blink my eyes, how I might speak, if I pause or not. Um, and I thought that was really interesting that he, he gets to the point where he feels and knows that character so well because he's written their story, he's written a whole biography for them, that he can, he can make you feel, and if you watch him, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about, if you get around to watching The Five Bloods. Mm. He can really make you feel, and you can really believe, he is 100% to his core feeling, what he's feeling, and that's because he's measured that center of gravity. Mm. Isn't that a cool way of answering the question yeah consummate pro really in oh, tremendous stage presence as you alluded to like just so good it's such a wonderful face too mm -hmm. he's got a great face so that was my um kind of recap that's what i took away from from that interview and really i'm now even more interested in following his his work and going back in fact i found this week so many movies, plus the one book you recommended, so many things I wrote down on a to-do list to get to. <laughs> I don't know how long it's gonna take me, but I'm definitely gonna go back and watch some of his work. It's gotta be worth it. I, I really recommend it. I really recommend, uh, probably a lot of you know Del Roy Lindo, um, way better than uh, we did. And um, hopefully you enjoyed this this recap here, but. You know, he, he really earned these awards. I, I would have liked to see him nominated for an Oscar, and I think Defy Bloods was robbed, just like everybody does. Everybody else thinks it was robbed. Great movie. Veterans, Vietnam veterans have come up to him in everywhere he goes and thanks him for um, his work because they feel seen. Mm, that's so important. Isn't it? It's ever? a very human need to feel seen, I think. And part of the beauty of this industry and this, this profession that we're looking at. Isn't it the beauty? And so, just, just a, to a final, like a parting shot. Um, we said earlier in the week, these are heavy topics as we went through the pandemic together in 2020 and still are. Many of these movies were really heavy topics. Mm -hmm. The Five Bloods, pretty heavy topic. 
Sure. Interesting twist, though, because they go after a treasure they left behind in Vietnam gold bars, to be specific, these, these ex-Vietnam vets. Um, but, and, and I mused early in the week, why would we want to sit around during a pandemic when we're all kind of uh, about the whole thing and watch even harder topics? What is that about the human psychology? I think uh, whether it's literature or film or any other form of storytelling, um, people feel uh, less alone and also able to better process whatever they're going through by seeing it acted out or written out, et cetera, in, uh, in some form of art. Bingo. He got it. He's, he's good, isn't he? He's great. Grade A. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for joining us this week at the Rose Wall. Um, we may be doing some more in the future. Uh, and uh, hopefully you felt less alone. God, God willing. Subscribe if you'd like to. Um, leave us some comments. Let us know what else you want us to talk about. And stay well.